Hello there, I'm Dan, and welcome to another video on RetroTech. This time, we're going to be looking at the Lenovo ThinkPad T420, the stalwart of portable corporate computing prowess from 2011. With the ever-increasing need of affordable computing for people working and learning at home, I set myself the task of finding a laptop that could stand a chance against something brand new in 2022. So, with that said, in this video we're going to explore whether this £40 Lenovo ThinkPad T420 can be used for daily tasks, light gaming, and whether it still stands a chance 11 years after it was released. Originally, the ThinkPad T420 could be configured with a second generation Intel Core i3, i5 or i7 processor with up to 8GB of DDR3 RAM and up to a 500GB hard drive or 160GB SSD. Models could also be configured with a discrete GPU in the form of an NVIDIA NVS4200M with 1GB of VRAM along with NVIDIA's Optimus technology that could automatically switch between the integrated and discrete GPUs to save battery life without sacrificing performance. The 14-inch display had a resolution of 1366 by 768 pixels. However, there was also an option to upgrade to a HD Plus display with 1600 by 900 pixels. The T420 we're having a look at here today is the mid-range spec with an Intel Core i5-2520M processor with 4GB of RAM, 160GB hard drive, with an integrated GPU, and the HD Plus display. This laptop also comes with an interesting selection of ports, such as VGA, a Gigabit Ethernet, a Display Port, and a USB port on the left-hand side, an always-on USB port and modem on the back, and a USB port, an eSATA port that can also be used as a USB port, an SD card slot, an Express card slot, a DVD drive, and a headset jack on the right-hand side. And finally, at the top of the bezel is a 2 megapixel webcam and that infamous Think light that illuminates the keyboard. The original operating system that came with the laptop out of the factory was Windows 7 Professional OEM 64-bit. However, as you are probably aware, support for Windows 7 ended on the 14th of January 2020 after 10 years of service. Whilst Windows 7 can still function, there is no longer any software or security updates or fixes which could put the operating system at a greater risk for viruses and malware. Therefore, we are going to be using a different operating system, Windows 10. Luckily for us, the product key on the machine was able to activate the Windows 10 Pro installation without any problems, so we are good to go. Whilst it would be nice to use Windows 11 on this machine, it isn't officially supported and is out of the scope of this video to get it up and running. We will be exploring the use of Linux on this machine in another video, as Linux and ThinkPads go together like fish and chips. However, the focus of this video will be on Windows 10, as that's what I think a lot of people will be comfortable with. Overall, this particular T420 is in decent shape, but it does have the typical signs of wear and tear, such as scratches on the lid and base, worn corners, and the E and V missing from the logo. The keyboard is also a bit shiny, along with having a lightly used palm rest. The bezel is in good condition, and the screen has the slightest of marks on it, but nothing that is going to hinder usage on a day-to-day -day basis. However, as you can see from the photos on screen now, it was absolutely filthy when I first got it, and it took a considerable amount of time to remove the years of grime, dust, dirt, bodily fluids and other residue from it. But for £40, I was able to look past these battle scars, filth and dirt to have a laptop that can stand the test of time. The installation of Windows 10 Professional went smoothly. I downloaded the latest ISO, flashed it to a USB stick using Rufus, plugged it into the laptop while switched off, switched the laptop on and selected the boot device, followed the prompts and subsequently installed the operating system. If you are unsure how to do this and would like a video on how to do it, please leave a comment below so I can gauge interest.
Once the laptop had been fully updated and the relevant drivers installed, I conducted some various benchmarks to see how the computer would perform to modern day equivalents. Firstly, boot time. From cold boot to the desktop, including typing the password and allowing the hard drive to settle down, it took approximately 70 seconds. Secondly, crystal disk mark. At approximately 80 megabytes per second for read and write, the results leave a lot to be desired and we could really benefit from having an SSD installed into this machine. Finally, Cinebench. I actually had to run this test multiple times as it kept on crashing at the end of the test. However, we finally got some results and I can confirm that this processor isn't going to win any records anytime soon. With a multi-core value of 1211 and a single core value of 576, this CPU doesn't hold a candle to even the most budget processors of 2022. And that being said, it is comparable to the Intel Core i3-10100Y released in the first quarter of 2021, which is in the Microsoft Surface Go 3 at 12 times the price of this laptop. So let's have a look at some light tasks. Starting with YouTube, I'm loading up Big Buck Bunny and you can see that it is playing fine in 1080p, even if there are a few skip frames at the beginning. I did try the 60fps version in both 720 and 1080p, but there were too many skipped frames. So let's have a look at some office tasks. Loading up Libra Office Writer and Calc, basic office tasks can be done without issue. This laptop isn't a powerhouse and you're not going to be able to play the latest AAA games at all. That's not what this laptop was built for. However, it will play games like Doom, Portal, Half-Life 1 and 2, Skyrim at very low settings, along with running RetroArch for emulating various consoles such as Game Boy, Super Nintendo, PlayStation 1 and Sega. However, we are going to run into some problems when running the Dolphin emulator to play some GameCube and Wii games. The performance is just not there. I wasn't able to get the Switch emulators up and running either due to the iGPU and only having 4GB of RAM. Overall, Windows 10 Professional runs well on this system. However, the main bottleneck that is slowing everything down is the lack of a solid state drive. The 160GB hard drive currently in the system is slow and makes the laptop feel a lot more sluggish than it actually is. So, let's talk about what we need to do to bring this laptop into 2022. Firstly, I suppose the elephant in the room would be that anemic 160GB hard drive. We're so conditioned to having fast flash storage these days that a mechanical drive will just not suffice for day-to-day -day computing. So, to squeeze out as much performance as possible from this machine, it would be recommended to immediately upgrade to an SSD. You can pick up a 120GB SSD for approximately £16 or $20, which would significantly increase the performance of the machine. It is easy to swap one out too, as it is just one screw on the bottom left of the T420 to open the cover and slide out the hard drive. Secondly, even though the 4GB of RAM performed fine for the day-to-day -day tasks and activities, it chugged a little bit when undertaking heavier tasks. Therefore, upgrading to 8 or even 16GB of DDR3 RAM would ensure that you wouldn't have to worry about multitasking or running out of memory. You can pick up 4 or 8 gigabyte modules for 8 to 12 pounds a piece, same in dollars, on the used market. The third upgrade is optional, but if you require more storage, did you know that you could replace the DVD drive for an Ultra Bay SATA Caddy that can add an additional 2.5 inch SATA drive to the T420? This would mean that you would no longer be able to use CDs or DVDs, but for normal computing and in today's environment, discs are slowly becoming obsolete and wouldn't be missed by most. Again, it is very easy to upgrade with just one switch to remove the DVD drive. There's also the question of whether you need USB 3.0. The T420 is only capable of USB 2.0 and unless you want to utilize that express card slot to add extra USB 3.0 capabilities, you are stuck with relatively slow data transfer speeds. This upgrade would cost approximately eight pounds or $10. Finally, the battery. This 57 watt hour battery has seen better days and, after 11 years, doesn't really hold much more than 30 minutes of charge. There are options out there to get an aftermarket battery, including extended and or large capacity batteries, but 
In my experience, they seem to discharge rather quickly and don't hold up over time. That being said, if your battery is completely dead, picking up a 6 or 9 cell aftermarket battery for £20 might tide you over. You could also pick up a genuine replacement battery, however, at this price point, replacements can sometimes cost twice as much as the laptop itself. While some people go for aesthetics, other people look at a computer's form factor, screen resolution, specifications, usability and durability before choosing a product they can use. Personally, I think the T420 has it all. It is aesthetically pleasing to the eye, in a utilitarian way. The 14-inch form factor is perfect for portability. The resolution is more than adequate, and much better than the 1366 by 768 panel that came by default. The specifications are good enough to get some light gaming and tasks done. The usability, especially that keyboard, is a dream to type on, and the durability, well, ThinkPads are built like tanks, so we have no problem there. Whilst this laptop could benefit from some upgrades, it is still perfectly usable as is, and I don't think anyone could argue that this Lenovo ThinkPad T420 wasn't value for money at £40, even without the upgrades. So, would I recommend it? Yes. For most people, doing day-to-day -day tasks such as browsing the internet, checking emails, watching some YouTube videos, playing some light games, or even video calling with friends is still perfectly doable with this £40 Lenovo ThinkPad T420. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you'd like to watch more content like this and about other retro tech, tech reviews, repairs and DIY projects, be sure to check out my channel and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TheRetroTech and as always, thanks for watching.